はーい<笑> This episode may include comedy Hi and welcome to Geekology, I'm David I'm Sven And tonight we're reviewing Star Trek, the official Starship Collections issues 68 and 69 And in a rare turnaround Yes You've opened yours <laughs> Mine are still in their box. Because you already got them this morning, didn't you? <laughs> yes. Yes. Yes, I did. <laughs> so, um, you get to do the magazine while yes, it's open. Absolutely. Right. 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 Issue 68. The Federation Attack Fighter. Which no, is, no, is, no, is a, is no, a no, 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 no. That no. immediately makes me want to explode. No, no. Shall, shall we just go issue C? I'm not naming this. Because I, I, I remember the rat guard said, you... Ranted for longer oh, than the episode where that thing first appeared. And I'm just no. I'm just no. Uh, no. Sven, you Hot words of no. To, we we normally it. show we normally <laughs> show the audience that Right, here we go with the magazine. We're still on our amazing Ripley paper. <laughs> um, <laughs> Federation Attack Fighter. Yeah, okay. Type fighter, affiliation federation. That immediately makes me go. No. 25 metres long, crew of two. There was obviously bigger ones that the marquee then got their mitts on, and there's also the Caribbean class courier ships which got turned into battles, no, fighters. Yeah, you, you know how they made that alteration, don't you? Mm -hmm. On the spec sheet, <laughs> yeah. from day two, they put five. Phaser emitters, photon torpedoes, pulse cannons. Pulse cannons? Pulse cannons. Okay. <clears throat> Federation Tap Fighter, we've got a uh, reasonably nice CG shot there, kind of matches the one on the front. Um, <clears throat> looks like a Cylon Raider. No, they're no, no, designed. seriously, look, look at that. Oh, from... It, yeah, yeah, that's a Cylon Raider, I don't care. Okay. Um, all you need is, is, is the, 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 the Viper in front of it getting blasted. Um, <clears throat> they marquee engineer them to fire weapons provided by the Pagorians. Okay, including particle, particle accelerator and high-end disruptors. Having huge problems with the ship. No, the, that was actually listed, but, yeah, no. but... Uh. Yes. Um, obviously it turned up in Next Gen in um, the episode where Rogue decided to disappear off and defect to the Marquee. Preemptive strike, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. um, and turned up in Deep Space Nine, not only as in the use of Marquee, but then the whole wings of them turned up in Dominion war battles, so it was like, oh, okay. Topographical view, there we go, deuterium loading port, exhaust for the impulse drive, etc, etc, etc. Pretty standard stuff, just taking the layout of this abom abomination. Um, <laughs> you bring it to life, yeah, that's all I can yeah. say. Um, and then we've got designing the Federation fighter, where they clearly just took a Cylon Raider and added angles. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, there's the digital version, there's the model version. Yep. Um, I love the way you don't let your personal view of the ship at all interfere with how you <laughs> review the. Why change? <laughs> Um, and now a little bit on Digital News, who did the effects for most of the Dominion War episodes. Um, so that's... Or oh, as I like to call them, people I have stuff kicking around on my desktop and will reuse yeah. them. Oh look, an Excelsior! And they have all oh, these... Oh look, an Excelsior! All these images of all these Galaxy Class starships there. Oh look, an Excelsior! Yeah, yeah. How many Excelsior classes can we get on screen at once? Oh, I don't know, but there's a few Galaxy Classes that can't possibly exist. <laughs> um, <laughs> I quite like that, actually this. There's a shot here of um, blocks, <laughs> very early CG renders, basically where the, the, they've got labels telling you what ship is what, and this needs to be one and two enterprises. This is in fact two mean that means two galaxy classes, basically. And you're just like, wow, okay. Um, and you've got storyboards in here as well, which is you know nice thing to see, to be fair. Yeah, storyboards. Yeah. And here they are flying around and and basically you know shooting the crap out of stuff. Um, 3D, you know, going on about 3D digital environments, etc, etc. Uh, then a little bit on the key appearances, so Marquee Part 2 and Preemptive Strike. A um, little bit of trivia. And then, coming up next time, the Breen Warship. Fair enough. Okay, excellent. Standard fare, good mag, 
I just don't like the content. Um, <laughs> But that's no, a the, the thing. content was fine. It was yeah, it's just it's the, the one of these materials. Yeah, really objective. I hate it. <laughs> My back thruster engine is crooked. It's just yeah, I think mine is as well. Yep. Yeah, that looks like a standard thing then. Mine's got a chip on the paint. Has it? Yeah. Where? Yeah. So is mine. Yours had hair in it as well. Yeah. I we pulled the hair out of yours before we start filming. The join mark is really well hidden. Yeah, give them that. Nicely done. Help me here, dude. I'm, I'm stretching. By your command. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm not Me seeing freedom. that. I'm, I'm, okay, from that angle, yes. But from the front, oh. no. Um. All right. Fair's fair. I hate the ship. But but the model itself is a reasonable. reasonable recreation of it. I'd say that they were being lazy by painting on the well, what would technically be the warp cells. Yeah. Because they could have put the clear perspex there. Other than that, it's not a fact that I can say you can fill yeah, the metal of detail. There's detail, the detail yeah. on it's good. Other than the fact that I dislike the ship, there's actually nothing wrong with the model. The painting isn't. It's as a little. It's a little it downplayed. Be. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's there's the side windows of the cockpit are missing. They have well, they're they're, they're moulded in. They're not painted. They're moulded in, not painted. Um, there should be greater definition difference between the two greys. There should definitely yeah. be a, a, a darker grey. But on the and whole, the darker grey should be on the back here as well. Yeah. A little bit and yeah, there's there's bits that aren't picked out that should be. It's a reasonable uh, facsimile. I'm happy yeah. with the price, but the, the back nays uh so I can't even go blah <clears throat> it, it's fine for what it is, reasonable for the price point. I'm annoyed that the back thruster assembly is, is crooked on mine, but yeah. it's the same on yours. No, yeah. Definitely could be taken off and re glued, so not the end of the world. I had no interest whatsoever in having this in my coach. Nope. Let's go into the back of the display. Yeah. Ta-da. I mean, it's it's reasonable. I'm not going to give it more than six. I'm going to give it six because... Actually, I think give it a seven, to be fair. Yeah. Yeah, it's only the, the back thruster. They did a nice job of holding the scene. Yeah, point. I, I'm a little bit annoyed that not everything's been picked out as, as the images would suggest. But I it's say a little bit enough. annoyed because I really don't care. No, fair enough. It's just, it's it's a ship that I have an issue with existing. It's, it's a square ship for a start. Yeah. It doesn't look Federation-y. Nope. But then, but, but it's kind it, of see, the point when the thing that always annoys me, because they said, Federation attack fighter, and it's like, why would the Federation have attack fighters? What would be the point? Yeah. Um, so no, I mean, yeah. the shuttlecrafts did have the ability to defend themselves. Yeah. They had phasers, the bigger ones. Did have the ability to launch torpedoes. Now, for me personally, I think this is a bit of a redundant inclusion in the collection, considering we already had the Marquee Raider. Okay, yeah. Obviously, uh, Voyager fans and no, just Voyager fans wanted the Marquee Raider. I think they're the only people. I don't think DS9 fans were a uh, massive fan of the Marquee as such, were they? Although it did lead to a couple. Of, the whole Marquee storyline did lead to a couple of good DS9s. Yeah, I mean this is the thing, but but this is how many episodes did they use this in in total? Because it has been used quite a few. I mean, it was in Preemptive Strike. Yeah. In TNG, they turned up in the Marquee parts one and two. Yeah. Deep Space Nine. And there, as as, and in both cases, it was a marquee vessel. So it was designed primarily as a marquee vessel. See, I always think of the Voyager version of the marquee yeah, vessel. Yeah, exactly. But then it turned up as wings and wings and wings of the of attack fighters. fighters for the it's Federation, which rankles. pointless, pointless. Yeah, runabouts. Exactly. I mean, it's the thing. Even the large shuttlecraft. Okay, we didn't see much of the large shuttlecraft in Next Gen and onwards because we only yeah. saw them in season one, didn't we? The season one shuttlecrafts. They were huge. They were, but they got out phased for the newer versions. But yeah, but they were. They had photon torpedoes. Yeah. They might have been micro torpedoes, like. On they the, were, but yeah. the thing is, later next gen, season six and seven TNG. They were using had, had well, yeah, but not only runabouts. 
they said about the capability of shuttlecraft then because of a shuttlecraft yeah. then that could fire quantum torpedoes because that was one of the first time we ever heard quantum torpedo mentioned right. was in with a shuttle because it sort of brought in this image that a quantum torpedo would be much much smaller than mm. a photon torpedo which had no sense which they the means they must have been my, my, micro quantum torpedoes like yeah. micro torpedoes that Deep Space Nine used but the thing is Voyager like used two different kinds of quantum torpedo anyway so yeah. the whole well it's a whole weapons thing but it's beside yeah. the point it's, I don't understand why these exist in, in, in the show I know it's, it's, it's sloppy it's, writing. It's sloppy writing because instead of wings of those, wouldn't you have had wings of runabouts with the, the sensor pods replaced with like yeah a weapons platform? Yeah, Cause because be easily... because it's a multi it's a multi platform ship for science and yeah. the the whole they make this sound like its its pure job is an attack fighter, Which but is, in comparison to its size. With a runabout, in comparisons with its weapon complement, yeah. it, it is pointless. But again, with why would the Federation have attack fighters? And I'm a bit concerned about the design for them as well, because it's like, well, you've got these massive, great big impulse engines compared with the size of the vessel. The impulse engines are only slightly shorter than the warp missiles, which are built into the body, and that's a design I Eight yeah, because that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. So I'm just thinking, if there were attack fighters, if you designed attack fighters for your Federation fleet, wouldn't you have, say, a big ship that acted as a carrier for them? Wouldn't that make more sense than these flowing around alongside over massive distances? They did. They, they came out of the side. It was called the Galactica. <laughs> No, in all seriousness, if, if we ignore the fact that it's a pointless ship, yeah. if we ignore the fact that I really find it hard to imagine anybody going, please sir, can I have one in my collection? Because mm -hmm. I, I don't... I think this is one of the it. situations where the reason why the Eagle Must One is the only one that exists is because nobody wants the bloody thing. Mm -hmm. But we can't really use that argument because Eagle Moss have done lots and lots oh, of right. one-offs that have been amazing. Yes, absolutely. And I'm willing to have the odd one where I literally go, yeah. huh, okay, file it in the back yeah. and have the odd one where I just, I love the fact that they did it. Yeah, I completely understand. Yeah. So, so whilst I'm not loving the ship, I'm not mm. loving the concept of it, it's a reasonable facsimile, it's yeah. decent quality, although, you know, obviously I have that issue with the uh, the engine, but yeah. generally speaking, I'm relatively happy, and I'm going to give it a uh, 7. Okay, well, I'm giving it 6, because I think it's missing too many paint applications compared with that, okay. the version that's in the magazine, um, and I don't care about it. Okay, oh, that's fair enough. I did, we we, we yeah. did. See, the trouble is, when we started this, we had such noble aspects of we will rate them all according to the quality of it and this, this, and then our own personal bias just slowly crept yeah. in. The thing is, so, there's no such yeah. thing as an objective review. No, this is very true. It's an impossibility. So, you know, okay. let's not worry about it. Let's give what we think rather than what we think we should think. All right. So now we'll move on to issue 69, uh, the green warship, and when they mean warship they mean, oh hold on, they say 330 metres, no I think these were a bit bigger than that weren't they? <laughs> oh, I'm sure these were huge! Um, <laughs> mine is battle damaged. Yeah, yours met the defiant. Okay, well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to just apply that and pretend that it's... Yeah. Actually, it clips in quite well. Okay, right. Okay, I'll have a look at the magazine with you now. Yeah, you, you, you do that while right. I try to... Put cries over his dead ship. Ship um, together. Right, screen warship, you know, nice... Oh, I lost cover, the usual... Oh, look, Ripley paper. Um, Decent CGI. Yeah, screen warship. Yeah, it's hard to put it on the stand. It's actually got a bloody good stand. So, yay. Uh, 
Operated by the Breen Confederacy, type warship, 24th century, 330 metres. I'm thinking to that last episode of DS9, and I'm thinking those looked a lot bigger than 330 metres to me, but there we go. Top speed, high warp. Well, thanks for that. That narrows it down. Um, weaponry. Well, nine point three or four. Right, okay. Thanks for that. Um, when I played I played the video games a lot, and the Bream were, was a good ship. Although I have to say that one wasn't in it. This colour <laughs> did not appear in any of the games. Weaponry, energy dampener. It, okay. it counts as a weapon. I know. And torpedoes. Doesn't say what type of torpedoes, but torpedoes. Captain Thotgore. Okay. Thotgore, you too. <laughs> How would? How would? <laughs> <laughs> right, so here we go. Another You say ships are going to die? That's all going to die. <laughs> <laughs> so here we are. Nice CGI shot. Bit of information about the ship. Um, I'm guessing this isn't actually the really big ones. I would, I'm imagining actually that the CG work done for what you leave behind and things like that. They just took the same image, same mesh and just made a bigger one. Um, because they did look huge. And they certainly look bigger than a galaxy class, so 330 metres seems a bit small. Um, here we have a little bit of screenshotting, including the Defiant having a bit of a bad time with a, you know, the, the yep. dampener having a go at it. Um, what was left of Starfleet Academy? Yeah. Looks like, or Starfleet Command, depending on who you ask. Um, and here we have a warrior from Star Wars. No. <laughs> Are you sure if we don't take that helmet yes. off, there might be a Princess Leia underneath? Positive. You sure? Yeah. Okay. Breen uniform, which looks very familiar. Um, a topographical view, which doesn't actually have a top view. Topographical view without a top? What am I looking at? Yeah. Okay, you you know what? Let's let's break with tradition. Oh. Yeah, you have a look at it as well. That's I flicked through the magazine earlier and I didn't notice. We've got one side, another side, and another side. Oh, <laughs> um, that's a bit strange. Isn't it? Okay, it's probably it's topographical view with no top. Yeah. Okay, so it's a sidographical view. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, something like that. So we've got it from there. Is it a front and back? Do you Is know what's really bad? No, I, I, yeah, I, I actually, I actually want a topographical view because there are bits about the ship I don't get. <laughs> so yes, right. Moving on, designing the Breen warship. We've got various different designs that they went through. One that looked like a sword flying in space. That I would call the that has saber. to be the most hideous way of displaying the ship I've ever seen as well. Could they not have done this in black? Well, yeah. I mean, Doug Drexler worked on it, um, based on Johnny's work on it, and you're like, why wasn't that used earlier in the mag for the topographical view? And they'd label that. Mm. That makes no sense to me, but yes, it, it's quite a nice bit of background. Maybe because there isn't um, a vast amount of information about this version of the ship kicking about, and they literally were just scrambling. I thought you said this stand was great. Mine is. But your machine, your, your, your starship's broken. Do you think Kira's holding a thermal detonator in this image? <laughs> anyway, um, and then the usual on screen stuff the key appearances from his penumbra and changing face of evil and so on and so forth. And about the next issue, which is the Voth City ship, which you're really looking forward to because it's before you jump. So let's have a look at the ship. <laughs> we can already tell that this is not a hero ship. <laughs> Why? Because it's incredibly detailed, it's well painted yeah. and really looks good and very, very worth the price point. That would be it, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm glad yeah. we can see that from the same point of view. I mean, that impulse engine as well, down there at the back, that's been so nicely done with gloss paint that it actually looks almost like it could be translucent plastic. If, which is if not. you were gut eating it. There's no translucent plastic yeah. in here. But if you were going to pick it apart for anything, yeah. there are a couple of little blur lines in the mm. paints around the main struts. But I'm not going to pick on it for that. No, because this is really quite nice, isn't it? Mm. It's amazing how well 
top and the bottom one stand out in comparison with the other two. Reason obviously being, top and the bottom are plastic. Yeah. So the paint, although it's, you know what, I, I think it probably is the same paint. It's just well, the material. It would appear that the, yeah, it appears that the, the metal parts haven't held on to the detail as well as the plastic ones would. Yeah. Um, I'm loving this. But it's, it's a really... I mean, wow. I mean, it wouldn't be the first ship on my list to get, but... No, that's but really it's... really nicely done. I'm impressed. I love it. It's... Though, even even though I'm looking at all of those guns and I'm, I'm going, that looks like X-Gun from Transformers and that looks like other gun from Transformers. It does look like someone's literally built a ship and then stuck on a load of guns from toys on it. But... Yeah, that's that's. that's I, you know cool. what? The, I don't want to mention names because mm. that's not fair. But we used to know somebody who went to Star Trek conventions who wore starships around their neck like a necklace, mm. and I've suddenly got pictures of her in my head wearing this as a brooch. Yeah, you can see that. <laughs> that's an alien copy. This, this really is a fant. Bloody eagle masks! <laughs> what the what hell? is with eagle masks? Why can't they do an enter? Okay, other than the the D. Yeah. Have any of the other enterprises been as good as this? I would argue the E, but other than that, no. Yeah, you probably would. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. But you didn't have a huge problems with the original I ship. Did, did no, to to be fair, but it's not the point. The point is this is incredibly well done, and it shouldn't be. Mm. <laughs> it, well, shouldn't yeah, it shouldn't be. be. It shouldn't be. This is the thing. Is, is this ship only existed in CG, didn't it? It did. Yeah. Maybe that's fair. the difference. Okay. Well, I would have thought if anything that would make it harder because at least in the originals they made models, so yeah, you'd know where. But it went because wrong. of the way these are made, they could literally probably pull the mesh, convert it into a CAD design. But they could do that anyway because it's all been digitized later on. DS9 took care of a lot of that. Yeah, yeah, I can see where you're coming from. Digitally remastered took care of the rest of the classic. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. what you are technically missing is a handful of TNG but ships. What you are assuming there is that all of those files are still available. Of course they're still. No, they're not. They lost a load of massive them. Drives they lost them. a load of them because of the format changes and and one of the companies going out of business and stuff like that. Hi, Tobias. Yeah. Yeah, I've got a little project for you. <laughs> it's. Mm, no. Toby, we love you, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Toby, is there anybody out there going, that? Toby, he's done another version of such and I such. I believe he got banned from some some Trek site somewhere, and I'm just like, are these people For insane? What? Who are they going to ban next? A Rodenberry? What? I don't Why know. did they ban you? I don't know. It's just, I didn't pay any attention. I just saw he's been banned from someone else. <laughs> Idiots. Anyway. No, right. no, no, that's really bad, because I'm not... You know I hate gossip, and that's, I'm really curious to know what Ali did to upset them. Probably just better than them at CGI. Anyway. Well, that happens. Yes, quite. I, okay, if you're cherry-picking a ship, this one. Yeah. I wouldn't got got, got, got yeah. to be on the list. What are we giving it score? What are you giving it score? Oh, you know. Because I'm going with eight. I'm going with nine. Oh yeah? Yeah, I'm tintering on nine and a half, to be honest. Mm. I mean, I'm a little bit disappointed in the loss of detail on the metal parts. Now, whether that's because... That only stands out in such stark yeah. contrast because of the top being so yeah. well defined. I'm just wondering whether that's a problem See, the with the material. See, the getting nine for me is because of those blend lines. Yeah. I mean, the... I've got, and, I've got a know, question whether that's down to the material we used, whether it's too low a grade of metal. <laughs> Or they haven't let it cure properly. Don't know. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with my eight. I, <laughs> I like the fact that I'm giving a ship and nine that comes apart. <laughs> At least it's come apart cleanly. It's not actually broken. Yeah, it's just no, disassembled. It's just disassembled. So I, I yeah. think that's amazing. Um, I'm very very happy with that. No cool.
Now also in that box, when these ships turned up, came this! But you're going to have to wait until the next video. And on that note, I'd like to thank you for watching. You can subscribe to us here on YouTube. You can follow us on both Facebook and Twitter. And of course, there's the official Geekology website. Now hopefully we'll see you at Out of the Ashes, the FCD event on the 2nd of April. Links below. If you'd like to comment on our video, do so below. And if you have any more feedback, just find us on Facebook or contact us via Twitter. Thank you for watching and good night. Bye. Hi and welcome to My Little Starships. I'm David. I'm Sven. <laughs> I love the cheesy. <clears throat> Hi and welcome to Geekology. I'm David. And I'm Sven. And tonight on Educating Dave. So, um, which G1 Transformer is this? It's not, it's a GoBot. <laughs> I shall get you, Megatron. It's Looks like you need a one bomb more. <laughs> It's a box with a box and a fish. And oh, it's, it's death charge. <laughs> <laughs> oh, seriously? Finish seriously? It, big ship, <laughs> peregrine fighter. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, that should be first off. Right. <clears throat> well, some of them. <laughs> See if we can get through this with one cut of just the intro obviously <laughs> not the episode hi and welcome to geekology i'm david and i'm sven and tonight episode of fucking nuggets i jinx myself your fucking nuggets fucking nuggets okay <clears throat> put that in the blooper so lovely mm, milky milky, milky. <laughs> We are wrong. We are wrong, wrong human beings. My brother had a live yoghurt once, oh. but he misunderstood. He got a normal yoghurt and plugged it into the mains. Lovely. Milky, milky. <laughs> <sighs> you can't remember what you had for dinner <laughs> yesterday, but I remember this sketch in 20 years ago. It's Teddy! <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember the bath one? I had a bath of milk once. I was in it for five days. Then I couldn't get out. I was stuck in a hundred weight of cheddar. Cheesy, cheesy. <laughs> Lovely. Milky, milky. <laughs> one of us needs help. I'm not 100% sure which one. You know those penguins? Fucking lazy birds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, ladybird. Yeah. Ladybird. Did did those those oh, new modern birds? Yeah. yeah? yeah, yeah. I I read um scout <laughs> can say that. Uh the the one for dating when two people have decided they don't want to die alone. <laughs> it's like who the wrote this? <laughs> I like the end. <clears throat> dating, followed by marriage and shortly by divorce. <laughs> Have you read the one about the guide to how to control how to uh, how to wife and how to husband? How to husband's fucking hilarious. Really? I gave one to Erica. <laughs> I really wish you were on purpose. I did give one to Adam. Um, Lovely. Cheesy, cheesy. Wookie, wookie. I, I think I'm gonna. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, 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 at any point. There, Hello there, everyone. Point. Lovely. <laughs> just mention. <mentioned. laughs> <clears throat> Don't mind us, just enjoying the coat before the sugar tax comes in. Because after that, it'll just be milk based drinks. Lovely. Milky, milky. <laughs> <laughs> You didn't realise that even if you were going to leave that in there, the <laughs> Americans would go, they're doing what? <laughs> they're taxing, shouldn't they? Yes. 
As long as it's not a gun. <clears throat> I can understand why the Canadians and the Mexicans now want to build walls. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wall just got five foot or ten foot. Higher. You can't figure out to pay for the fucking beginning part. How you add him for? Do you know what got with me is that it's the one thing that Donald Trump might actually be able to follow through on on his, on his manifesto. I'm sure that boy could follow through on a few things. Well, yeah, but it's the fact that he's boy, he's you know, he's, in, he's almost seventy. Um, <laughs> but he basically said that he would get a war bill between him and Mexico and get the Mexicans to pay for it. Yes, they will I do that. Yeah, I'm sure he that comes in to be a prince. I'm sure he they would out. actually <laughs> like the idea of building that. Yeah, one. right. Yeah, actually, the Canadians want to do it. Seventy, yeah, that would explain to me. Yeah, you could. It could it just be senile and just Sorry, people haven't or, realised. Or he's just got fat. Changed his colour hair, uh, hair colour and shaved off his moustache. Yeah, oh, that tweet, that tweet was funny. Yeah. Oh, I've, got, I've got so many retweets of that. I'm First time I ever did it. No, I okay. oh, look, I love the lumps and loads of retweets. It's quite chuff. Right, <coughs> three. Hi. Two. Hi. Hi. And welcome to Decology. Lovely. I'm strange. Geeky, geeky. No, not too geeky, geeky. <laughs> Fucking no. Yeah, no shit for this as it is. <clears throat> Three, two, one. Hi, and welcome to Geekology. I'm David. And I'm Sven. And tonight we're reviewing Star Trek, the official Starship collection by Eagle Moss, issues 68 and 69. 69. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you! You have sugar before an episode of cake. Number coke. Number coke. <laughs> oh fuck. <laughs> just, just, just. I, I must be tired this week. Okay. Is you cool? <laughs> you composed. I'm sitting here doing an episode of something called Geekology with a couple of starships in front of me. Am I cool? Cool? No! <laughs> I hope not anyway! We're smooth. <laughs> <coughs> okay. Smooth as an android's bottom, eh, Data? <laughs> <coughs> That's hairy as an android body. Right, ready? Mm -hmm. Feeling good? Yeah. Okay. Hi, and welcome to Geekology. I'm David. And I'm Sven. And I'm <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, breathe. Um. <sighs> Hi. <laughs> this episode may include comedy. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> None of the others do, and let's see what this one should. Ah, right. <clears throat> Hi, and welcome to Geekology. I'm David. I'm Sven. And tonight, stuff. <laughs> Hi, and welcome to Geekology. I'm David. I'm Sven. And tonight on Stuff. <laughs> By the way, I saw some um, Muppets lounge pants in uh, B and M bargains today with animal on. Yeah. Okay. And now we're going on to issue sixty-nine. <laughs> what the bloody hell? Did <laughs> you say sixty-nine? <laughs> sixty-nine. Milky, milky, lovely. <clears throat> Okay. Hi ladies. We you say now we're going on to six right? Do you want to pick up the Mac and the Mac? Okay. Okay. And now we'll move ourselves onto a 69. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so. Um <laughs> I'm not letting you have sugar ever again! <laughs> not allowed it before we film. Are you taxing my sugar? Are you? Are you taxing my sugar? Oh yeah, I was born. Um... <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>